welcome back to more Let's Play Tokyo Dark. In the previous episode, we uh, were talking with uh, with uh, oh jeez, I forgot her name. Well, anywho, we were talking with the family, and they were like, "Hey, uh, we talked to the older brother, T Takashi, I want to say, uh, and he." When we were asking for more information on the mask, we learned about a cult called the Common Kai, if I remember correctly. And uh, essentially, he was just like, well, there's this old researcher dude at the house next to me. Go ask him about it. He'd know a lot about it. And uh, we talked with him for a bit, and then he was just like, hey, uh, I actually can tell you more about the mask, but you're going to have to go get it from the dude outside. So that's where we're going. So, I guess he's referring to this dude. Ask about tea shop? The old tea shop next door. Isn't that place closed down? Closed? That can't be right. What else do you know about it? Your conjecture on this one, but I think it might be owned by the kendo instructor from the dojo down the street on account of him being the only one I ever see in there. You might not believe me, but I swear I saw him in there chatting away to himself. Possibly he's a little nuts. But again, it might be some super awesome kendo meditation technique. Oh man, why didn't I think of that before? Next time I ought to ask him for some pointers instead of spying on him, huh? Word, word through the grapevine is that he's a regional champion or something and has trained some of the best. Lots of cops train with him too, so he must be good. Maybe he's not so crazy after all. Speaking of which, I have a bit of a crazy question for you. I know you said it was closed, but do you know anything about a book taken from there, maybe recently? I was led to believe you would. I am, uh, I, oh jeez. Go on. Like I said, the place has been empty for years, but you know, I spent a lot of time outside it, half the time the door's wide open. So one day, a few months back, I decided to take a look around. Nothing suspicious or nothing. I was just curious as all. <clears throat> Curiosity killed the cat, right? Anyway, it was, a. Uh, all dusty and old, and there was all sorts of weird stuff laying around. So I might have taken a little souvenir. I mean, it wasn't super old, nothing, so I figured no one would miss it. Besides, it wasn't for me. It's for my kid brother. The guy could get deep in the dumps sometimes, so I try to be on a standby for when that happens, you know. So I figured a little gift would cheer him up. Back then, he was going through some particularly tough times. His bitch wife. Pardon my language, miss. Had left him and taken their kid daughter with them. He still doesn't talk about it, like he's in denial or something. <laughs> Got off track, and I was heading to visit with him with the uh, ill-gotten book when I got this phone call saying he was in the hospital. He OD'd on expensive sake and sleeping pills. Thank God that idiot decided to do it at the bar he owns. Door unlocked. The customer came in and called an ambulance. No more for that, I'm not sure. He'd still be here. By a story, it sounds really like he wanted to be found. I think so too. I think he was trying to ask for help in his own way. In any case, I took the book to him while he was in the hospital. I tried to show him that even when he was at his, at his lowest, there was someone out there trying to do something nice for him, you know? I think it helped for a minute, anyhow. As soon as the doctors let him leave, he went right back to the toxic little bar. I hope he's okay. He's got issues, but he's my little brother, and I worry about him. I've been answering my phone calls lately. Originally, my brother's bitch ex-wife, sorry again, had the brilliant idea to put his skill to work in a cheap part of town. Despite that, he's only onto it with everything he's got. The place is slowly bankrupting him, but he won't let it go. All he has to do is sign some paperwork and move on, but he can't. Nothing about it has it, its claws sank deep into him. I'm trying to get him to join me in my business for years. He's a great chef, he would make a killing. I mean, it's not the same as owning a whole bar, but serving passers-by and getting some sunshine is good for the soul. Plus, food stands are doing really well abroad, I hear. Much better than wasting away in Sinjuku, at any rate. Sinjuku? Yeah, a slimy little side street. Anyway, if that book is important to you, he's probably got it at his place. You want the address? Wait, I knew you looked familiar. Your brother's Daizo, right? You know him? 
A small world. It's probably the smile on my face that threw you off. Tell him his brother Haruto says hi. While you're at it, tell him that Takoyaki stands are still the future of cuisine and to get his butt over here. I'll do that. Thanks for all your help. That's still a bit yikes, though. Daiso, like, legitimately almost committed suicide. You hate to see it. <laughs> Alright, we're back in Sinjuku. Go ahead and get up into the tea shop. Hey there, bud. Hey, Yomi. How can I help you today? Hey, Daiso. How are things? Oh, <laughs> you know, same old, same old. <laughs> Funny thing, I met your uh, brother while I was in Asakusa today. Haruto? You met Haruto? What are the chances? Who knows? It was pretty random. Huh, who'd have thought? Is he still selling a uh, takoyaki at his stand? He say anything? He is. He said to remind you that uh, takoyaki stands are the future of cuisine and that you should go and help him. <laughs> yep, you talk to Haruto, all right. Always the optimist, that guy. Actually, I have a favor to ask you. You still have the book your brother gave you a few months ago? <laughs> the only thing that guy gives me is a headache. I wonder if I can help you, Ayami. He said he gave it to you while you were in the hospital. Oh, I... Uh, Makes you think I was in the hospital. I don't even go to the hospital for checkups. <laughs> Besides, that dolt's bringing me stuff all the time. Always trying to drag me kicking and screaming over to where the grass is greener. A little bit more recently. After a rough patch. Maybe it was stupid to come and ask. Oh, no, no, it's fine. Uh, that idiot always running his mouth. Frickin' traitor. <laughs> Those were just some uh, hard times. Nothing serious. I just drank too much is all. I'm um, sorry, Detective, but I don't want to talk about it. Alright, understood. I'm not here to dig up bad memories, Taizo. Thanks. You said you were looking for a book, right? Because I don't remember a book. I do remember Hardo giving me an old magazine, though, back at the hospital. One of the ones I used to read when I was younger. Things weren't quite so complicated. Wait there a sec. I may have it in the storeroom still. Okay, sorry, Elby. Hold on a sec. How much junk someone accumulates over the years. Maybe I should throw some of this old stuff out, huh? Here it is. It's yours, detective. Huh? Hey, no wonder I recognize that photo you brought by. It's the same girl. An idol named Ruby. Reba. No, Ruby. See, it says so right there on the cover. It's crazy that it was still in my shop. I guess that means you're still looking for her. Ugh. I wonder why we keep running into each other. Weird luck, I guess. I don't buy it. You're a hell of a detective. You must be. A you must have a pretty sharp nose. <laughs> you say so, Daiso. You mind if I take this? I said it's yours. About time I started getting rid of some of the old junk. Thank you. See you around, Yami. Take care, Daiso. Yeah, I'm not allowed to talk to him. Fair enough, fair enough. I guess we'll return that to the, uh... Can't even go into the Butterfly Lounge. Huh. Not that I had a reason. Uh, go and talk to the old man. He was in Asakusa. Can I talk to him about Daiso? No, I cannot talk. I've come back with it. Ah, welcome back, Detective. Is that my book I see in your hands? Guess I'm a little surprised. Are you trying to tell me Reyna is the mask bearer you talked about? That's hard to believe. Does it surprise you? After all, it is she who you see in the dark, is it not? Dark. That's what the Collector called it, too. How'd Reyna get tied up in all this? I know that somehow the girl's path and the masks collided, as if by chance. But circumstances led to this intersection are a mystery, I'm afraid. 
People always see history as something in the distant past, involving old men and black and white pictures. That book and the girl are as much as part of history as the rest. Threads that connect the past to the present, equal to each other, are not always apparent. Peel back the layers of connection, the randomness of our universe neatly orders itself. Excuse me. A teen idol, an ancient order, the tool they created, and the detective who holds it now, all forming a neat and tidy line. Reno was some sort of idol living in Tokyo, not part of a sleeper cell of some cult. It doesn't add up. On that detective, we can agree. So why don't we start at the beginning? To how the mask ceased to be a mere object. The story starts in ancient times, in the year 1333. At that time, Kamakura was the capital of Japan. Led by the Hojo clan, it was a time of peace, prosperity, and enlightenment. Peace among men is cynical. And... Cyclical? And like so many before them and so many after, their time of peace came to an end. The Nita clan, loyal to Emperor Go-Daigo, led a siege against the Hojo controlled Kamakura, taking the city as the tide receded, leaving a key passage open to the invaders. The Hojo clan fled to the caves of their family temple. With them, there was no hope of victory or escape. They chose to retain their honor. Instead of surrendering, the 870 Hojo samurai, including the last three regions, committed mass suicide. However, the Hojo and Ita clans, embroiled in their quest for uh, empire, could not see the role they played in the plans of another group, a religious sect known as the Kaban Kai. It is said that the flames of Kamakura, in the flames of Kamakura, a girl was seen wandering the streets, observing the carnage in the burning city. A girl lost to the histories by the name of Chikako Shichijo. The last survivor of the Common Kai. Okay, so whatever the Common Kai were trying to do, they failed. I mean, they all died, right? No, they did not fail. They only went exactly as planned. Chikako Shichicho did not survive by chance. She was chosen. Chosen for what? To receive the blessing of all the spiritual energy that so much death afforded become the first mask bearer. Mask bearer? The Kamakai used the deaths of all those people to create this? Why? Legend has it that the Kamakai sought to contain the door, a rift leading to the spiritual realm where our consciousness is, ceases to be and time holds to no meaning. A place where cause and effect could be changed. Why? Why spend so much human life and give up so much to do that. To stop it from being abused. Imagine being able to see the world as a god. So that the flow of time and the rules which govern our world are of no consequence. This is the power of the door. To a mortal mind obsessed with the finality of life, of death and meaningless accomplishment, such power would corrupt absolutely. Power over death. So a dark place was created to obscure the door and hide it from mortal eyes, along with a tool to control and see within the darkness. It's true, all of it. Sounds like a fairy tale, but it's true. Finding the door could be the key to bringing Tanaka back. Some doors, no matter how strong they call to us, are not meant to be opened, and the common Kai willingly gave their lives to keep it that way. The mask opens the mind to all who come in contact with it but it is intended for its bearer. Using it to find the door may destroy you. Maybe you're right. I could at least use it to find my way in the dark. It's like the collector said. The only thing I don't get is how Reyna is connected to it. That is a mystery. As Mr. Kawada told you, the last known location of the mask was the Kamakai cult only a few decades ago. Much was suppressed about the Kamakai under Tokimasa. They existed, and... And then on March 4th, 1996, they met their end. There was there were many theories. Police killed them during their raid at the compound, or that someone within the cult had snapped and murdered the others. 
Nothing but conjecture, I'm afraid. The real answer lies somewhere deep within police records, and though I remain curious, it is not something I have access to. Perhaps the best place to start is there. Finding out about the last days of the Kamakai may help light your path to the truth. Well, I wonder if such an object bred from suffering could truly put an end to it. Is it you, is it you who could finally break this terrible cycle? Ah, I've spent a long time here. I'm tired. So tired. Farewell, detective. Fair enough. So he thinks we should go to the police station and look up the information. Sitting there comfortably, the historian Yasuhisa casually laid out everything that I've experienced like he was reading it out of a book. Mass suicide, ancient groups, and a door to the spiritual realm. Sounds like a myth. Interesting story told to travelers in the bygone era. It's hard to believe it relates to Kazuki and Reina. I can't see it. Bridge between Kamakura Samurai and a young girl. I said Reina fit into the story. She's, uh, mask bearer, but how? Yasuhisa, the collector. I thought when I met them, I'd entered their world and could start to understand, however faintly. But my intuition as a detective tells me they're hiding something from me still. Maybe I'm overthinking it. I need to keep going. What day is it anyway? What have I been chasing these leads? The day turns to night. The hours bleed into each other. Even the seasons don't seem to follow the natural order anymore. Everything's blurring together. My head. Maybe I should take my medication. Impossible as it seems, following the old man's hunch is my best bet to finally understanding the mask. Even Takashi didn't know what happened to the Kamakai, finding the police report is way forward. A few weeks ago, it would have been easy for me to ask around and pull a file. It would be a bit more difficult now, I imagine. What's the worst that could happen? I should head to police HQ and see what I can find. Can I even go back to my house if I wanted to? Oh, yeah, I could go back to my apartment. Although, it, it is not actually an option. She wants me to go straight to the police headquarters. That's fair. Oh shit, you've gotta be kidding me. Funny, me and some of the other guys were just talking about you after practice the other day. Specifically, we're taking bets as to how long it would be before you showed your face again. Shame, you coming in here now cost me 10,000 yen. Tch, not that it matters. Ever since you left, things are looking up for me. I won the last department kendo tournament, and I've been enjoying my promotion. Oh yeah, thanks for the new office, by the way. Anyway. On active duty cops, or you in other words. Ain't allowed an HQ right now, so what do you want? Oh man, this just keeps getting better and better. Begging me for a favor, huh? Kinda figured you might someday. So what do you want me to do, Ito? You know? Sneak into the evidence locker? Steal your gun back for you? Heh, <laughs> like I'd do anything for you. Brass have already told everyone in the damn station to steer clear of you. You're considered bad luck for people's careers. Well, myself excluded, I suppose. Wouldn't expect anyone to do you any favors from here on out if I were you. And I'd rather not people see us talking and think that we're already friendly or something. Now get out before I have to call someone down here. I guess I won't be going in there. Side is the interior, which is, but it doesn't look like anyone's been there recently. Okay, well. Huh, <laughs> surprised to see you back. How can I help you, detective?
the historian. What is he? I spoke to Yasuhisa, the historian. Oh, good, and Takashi, what is he? I don't understand your question. He's one of them. Them? Ito, are you alright? Just an old man. What else would he be? Oh, Takashi, you must have noticed. There's something off about him. Like the collector, but not, not exactly like him. I'm not sure what Yasuhisa told you to scare you like this, but I've known him for years. He's a bit eccentric and too philosophical for his own good, but he's harmless. Let me to offer some advice. What are you feeling right now? It's not him. It's you. The more time I spent researching Kamakai in the past, the more I began to feel the world had gone mad. But it didn't. It continued to turn on its axis as it always does. It was me who became unhinged. You could always walk away, Detective Eno. Some mysteries aren't worth solving. Trade police? I was told your dojo trains a lot of people in the police. That's right, I trained many of them personally. You know Akira Taira, a detective from Tokyo HQ? Ah, uh, yeah, Detective Tyra, I know him quite well. A man with a great deal of innate talent in martial arts. Though that talent is offset somewhat by his brash personality. Brash is a very diplomatic way to put it. Sorry to put you on the spot, but Tyra is about the only usable link I've got left in the police force, and the one person who's trying to stop me the most. Seeing as you, tr as you train with him all the time, I was hoping you might, uh, Know something that would change his mind, if you know what I mean. You ask me to help you blackmail Tyra? Beyond the obvious reasons why I wouldn't help you do that, I also happen to think it won't work. You may be surprised to hear this, but Detective Tyra actually lives a fairly straightforward life. His excesses are nothing that would draw any scrutiny, at least not among his fellow officers. But here he is engaged to be married soon as well. Someone actually agreed to marry that slime? Poor girl. Yeah, a very nice girl. Apparently they're quite happy together. Oh so yeah. <laughs> See how long that lasts. I ask what exactly Tyra did to you to make you feel so strongly? Did to me? <laughs> Should be asking him that. Since I started, he's looked down on me. Never missed a chance to remind me how he felt. Ignored him because I figured it would, if I worked hard enough and earned my promotion, that I would shut him up once and for all. Eventually got this promotion, I take it. Well, did he shut up like he thought? No, he got worse. He started with them spreading rumors about me sleeping around in HQ, and then there were various complaints to my supervisor. I couldn't stand that I'd won. It's all falling apart now, though, huh? He got my old job, and every time I see him, he has that smug grin on his stupid face like he's mocking me. So you hate the fact that, at least in his mind, he was right. Something like that. Tyra's not the first person to think a woman didn't deserve the promotion I got. But it stung a little extra when he ended up at my desk. Yeah, I thought as much. You gotta say you think that brown-nosing, womanizing, lazy, good-for-nothing asshole actually deserves my spot, are you? No, I can't judge the inner workings of the police force, but from what I've heard, it certainly wouldn't be the first time an officer didn't earn their promotion, honestly. Often, I watch my students spar, and I always notice an interesting trend. You see, usually the outcomes of matches have nothing to do with their skill. Is there a moral to the end of the story? Patience, Eno. You see, two students will face each other, but before they even draw their swords, they've decided the outcome. The students rank each other and themselves based on practice, their social status, their school, or any number of things before they even enter my dojo. The student perceiving himself as stronger will always be more relaxed, more ready to attack, while the student who's resigned themselves to defeat desperately defends. It's not skill or merit that wins the battle, it's expectations. Do you see where I'm going with this? I do, but I'm not sure if I like it. You're saying that unless I can bring Tyra's perception of me, I'll keep losing, right? Exactly. For a man like Tyra who expects certain things of women, you define him at every turn. But, if I suck up to him and play the part, it might throw him off guard enough for me to win this fight. Sound about right? Very perceptive. Here, this should help. Sake? It's a gift. Wow, that's so flattering, I barely even know you. I suppose in order to degrade myself to scum like Tyra, I could use a drink. It's not for you. It's for Tyra. Oh, here I was thinking you were being nice. This is a very expensive brand. As a matter of fact, it's Tyra's favorite. A gift for his promotion. Promotion he stole. Promotion into my position. 
So think of it as a way to throw him off balance. He can't strike at his heart until he drops his guard after all. You know how to play the role he expects of you. I suspect you know the type of woman he likes. Much as it pains me to admit that might work. Thanks for the sake. Drink the sake. I guess that is always an option. <sighs> I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm sorry. That's it, Ito. I've heard enough of your- Wait, what? You heard it right, Tyra. I'm sorry. You're a good detective, and I never did congratulate you on your promotion. Here, this is for you. Eh, I get it. So you think Brian and me is gonna work, huh? Kenomichi? What a bottle of Kenomichi? No oh, way, it sells out in weeks. My family rarely managed to get a bottle, and they knew the people to ask. How'd you get it? It's not important. Consider it an apology for how I've treated you in the past. I present this to you as a way to formally hand over my position to you. It's clearly in better hands now. I... but... Edo. Sit up, will ya? You know, it's fine, just sit up already. Okay, okay, I accept your apology. Hell, didn't know you felt that way. I mean, in light of recent events and all, it's long overdue. Just with all that, uh, stress you've gone through, the delay is understandable. And you finally learned to manage your emotions appropriately. Thank you for your kind words, Detective Tyra. Once I return to the department, I know I'll have much to learn from you. Hey, it's a little early for that talk, don't you think? I don't even know if they'll let you back on the force after the hearing. Yeah, I suppose you're right, Detective. I shouldn't have spoken so brashly. Edo, stop that, please. I always thought you'd be a better cop if you listened to your fellow detectives a bit more. So well, there's a lot you have to learn from me, huh? I know you're right, Detective Tyra. I was so brash before, but that's probably how I ended up here. Uh, yeah. No problem. Thanks for dropping this by, Edo. To tell you the truth, it's been a tough time for all of us. It's better to stick together. We're all on the same team after all, right? Maybe once you're back, me and you can partner up. One can only hope I'll be so lucky. Right, right. Look, I gotta go back to my office. You, uh, you need anything else? Well, I was thinking about how no, I couldn't possibly bother you. You're so busy. It's fine, I can handle it. Go on. Well, I know I shouldn't be, but I've been doing a little research in an unofficial capacity, you know. I was wondering if you could pull a file for me. I know I can't give you access to the system. You're suspended, besides. Be against regulations, and... I guess if you stay on that side of the counter, I could get Ishibashi to help you. I don't think this means we're best friends or anything, it's just repayment for the Kenoichi. Oh, thank you. Tyra, uh, Detective Tyra. What do I want to impose on your busy schedule? Again? Stand up. Saki, I'm going back to my office. Look up the file Edo wants. Log the search query to my name. Got it? Yes, sir, of course. I'll be in my new office all afternoon, so direct all calls there. Clear? Yes, sir. I think he's gone. Damn it, Yami. I mean, I wish some guys around my finger before, but that was something else. I think it'll take long to get your office back if you keep working that magic. Yami, listen to me very closely. It's very, very important you train me how to do that for uh, professional purposes. <laughs> I think you're all right on your own, Saki. Oh, fine. Be that way. Anyway, you got Tyra's sign off. What did you want me to look up for you? On March 4th, 1996, there was a raid on a compound belonging to a cult called the Common Kai. I'd like the official report plus anything else you could find on it. Wow, that's some heavy reading material. I'll get right on it, boss. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's much to go on here. Looks like there's only one file. I know, I'll put it on a USB for you so you can take it with you. Just don't tell anyone. Here you go. Thanks, Saki, I owe you one. There'll be more than one, Yami. See you around.
to be fair, that was us getting even. I mean, I did, I did watch the counter while uh, she was delivering love notes on the uh, the roof. So, with that being said, however. Uh, it's been about 30 minutes, so thank you all for watching. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next episode where we're going to delve into this history about the common Kai some more. So, see you all then.